Are you ready? Welcome to Brands Hatch here in Kent. We're here at Radical TV for the Performance Direct Radical Clubman's Cup. We're here with over 90 radicals this weekend and we're looking forward to some really exciting racing. 36 of those radicals are competing in the Clubman's Cup. We've got two 20 minute races here today on the Grand Prix track, hence why drivers have travelled from all over Europe to take part in today's racing. We're looking forward to a really exciting weekend, so let's get on with round three. track here today at Brands Hatch qualifying for the Radical Clubman's Cup. We've got 36 cars there lined up behind me and we're welcoming a number of newcomers to the Cup as well including Andy Harwood, John Watson and David Sodland as well as rookie driver Jennifer Ridgway. They're about to head out now so let's see how they get on. Well it's a beautiful if blustery morning here on the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit as fulfil the cars for the performance direct Radical Clubman's Cup taking to the circuit for qualifying. Not only do they get the well-known Indy circuit, but they also go out onto notorious Grand Prix loop as the drivers taking the opening laps to familiarise themselves with the circuit, although it was James Abbott who was one of the early pace setters and Abbott performing well throughout qualifying, eventually lining up on the grid in fifth position. But on the back of two race wins thus far this year, he is in very fine form. Tony Wells was one of the race winners at Alton Park a few weeks ago and Tony, despite his relative lack of experience, has been there or thereabouts all season and in the mix throughout qualifying. With a busy circuit, track space was at a premium, but Richard Carver was one of the pace setters from the outset of the session, running second for the majority of the qualifying period. And the man he's trying to find his way past there, Matthias Mobo, number 92, was one of the preeminent pro sport runners and was giving us some great entertainment throughout qualifying. So Richard Carver and Matthias Bobo, both men on the move throughout the qualifying period. Qualifying wasn't without its moments, but I don't think there'll be any problems there for Jennifer Ridgway as she finds gear. Mark Smithson it was in number 17, who had pole position for the majority of the session. And Smithson setting his best lap early in the session, then set about trying to defend his mark as his rivals snapped on his heels. David Jacobs, always goes well and Brands Hatch was no exception. Lining up fourth on the grid and David able to find some track space more or less for much of the session. The Donington Park race winner looking to add more wins to his account during the 2011 season as he accelerates onto Paul Sotis. Tyus Moberg, one of the pro sport front runners as was Mark Abbott, number five and Mark qualifying well up the field, ninth place overall. Club Sport class headed up by John Morris in the number eight machine and John throwing the Club Sport machine exuberantly around the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. It was Tony Wells who eventually prevailed and claimed pole position, setting the pole mark on the final lap of the qualifying session to give him an advantage of just over four tenths of a second on Mark Smithson. In third place we had Richard Carver, fourth went where David Jacobs, James Owen was fifth with Darren Allen well up in sixth from Andy Harwood in seventh. David Swordland headed up the Pro Sport Runners in eighth with Mark Abbott in ninth and Matthias Moberg rounding out the top ten in a very full 33 car grid. So James, we've just seen you uh, finish qualifying there. Uh, you were a winner at Alton Park and it wasn't such a good qualifying for you this time, was it? No, I just had a bit of difficulty trying to get a lap together, obviously. There's a lot of cars on the track, that means there's a lot of cars to, uh, to race with really, which it's ain't a bad thing. You were really quick at the start, though. You seemed to gain quite a few places. Yeah, I think it's just uh, the track's new to a few people. Obviously, I've been uh, been learning every track I've been to, so it's a bit easier. And uh, had a bit of track time earlier this morning with the UK Cup, so uh, it's um, yeah, it's a bit easier. <laughs> so, John, that was a really good qualifying, first in your class for club sport. Um, how did you get on out there? How are you finding the Grand Prix track? 
Uh, it's nice, fast and flowing, some good bends. There's a lot more speed to be had out of it, I'm sure. But um, yeah, nice flowing circuit. Um, I don't think it's too difficult to learn, but there again, uh, there's more speed to be had, so obviously I've got something to learn, but yeah, good fun. Jennifer, the last time I saw you was at Alton Park and you had a pretty bad crash out there, didn't you? Yeah, I decided driving in the wet wasn't for me. It's time <laughs> to sit out and watch everyone else enjoy the, uh, the splash time. So I took a little break early on in the race. <laughs> the Grand Prix circuit here at Brands Hatch has attracted a huge grid, including drivers from as far away as Sweden. Earlier on, I caught up with a couple of those. So Matthias, you've come a long way to race here at Brands Hatch today from Sweden. Uh, what is it that drew you to racing with Radical? Well, uh, we have a, a cup in Sweden with Radical uh, and we've been competing in that uh, for uh, three years and uh, we, with pretty go good results. So uh, for this year we uh, want an extra... Uh, uh, something extra to do so we, we uh, decided to uh, when the sponsor said yes we decided to go uh, outside Sweden. So it's the first time you've been racing here at the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit how have you found it? Well uh, I think it's a great circuit uh, the circuit is, is uh, much uh, longer and uh, faster than I'm used to in Sweden so it's very fun. And how did you get on in qualifying? Uh, well, I set the uh, tenth uh, fastest time. Uh, I'm not uh, very happy b uh, about my driving, but uh, I will do better in the races. So, David, you've uh, qualified first in class. Congratulations! And you've travelled all the way from Sweden to come here and race for Radical. Um, what, what brought you here? Uh, first of all, we have been racing in Sweden for many years now, almost 15 years. So it was about time to get out of Sweden and try some other tracks. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't make it to Spa. Uh, but now we're here at Brands Hatch and it's a fun track and I've seen it before. So it's very, very fun to be here to drive. All 36 cars are almost lined up here on the grid at Brands Hatch. It's nearly time for race one of the Clubman's Cup. Anything can happen. We've got a lot of drivers here who are racing on this circuit for the very first time. So we're looking forward to a really exciting race. Let's see what happens. Well, pole position to Tony Wells as this huge grid stretches back along the Bradford Straits here at Brands Hatch. And there's going to be plenty of action, I'm sure, throughout the course of the race. In the starting gantry, that's a nice view as the ropes begin to rise. And we're about to get underway for the first of the Performance Direct Radical Club and Cup races here at Brands Hatch. Where we go, it's a poor start from David Jacobs, and he's rather swamped as they turn into battle for the first time. It's Mark Smithson who's jumped into the early advantage from in second place. We've got Tony Wells, third place is Richard Carver as they climb up towards Druids for the first time through the trees. Such a picturesque circuit here at Brands. The Smiths are running a little bit wide as they then plunge back down the hill to Graham Hill Bend. Tony Wells there in second, third place is Richard Carver, fourth place is James Abbott. So James Abbott gaining a place off the line as they accelerate towards Surtees and out onto the Grand Prix loop. The leaders just beginning to size each other up to mount the challenge as the race progresses. But well, the safety cars come out, so before all that completed, the safety car has come out. And so that is going to neutralize Phil. It's David Jacobs, unfortunately, who has gone off. Well, the safety car back in, and we get underway immediately with Mark Smithson heading the field, and then a bit of a gap back to Tony Wells, who's rather banching the rest of them up behind him. Stan and Andy as well in the mix in fifth position, so they accelerate towards Paddock Hill Bend, and we've got Carver challenging and going through on Tony Wells as Mark Smithson turns into Paddock. Carver goes second as they plunge down the hill. There's dust being kicked off, that could that Smithson's gone off, and Mark Smithson goes off. He comes back onto the circuit, and I just wonder if there was a tiny bit of fluid maybe on the track from the David Jacobs incident because Mark Smithson was first onto the scene and just understeered through the gravel trap of Paddock Hill Bend. He's done a great job recovering to third position as Richard Carver managed to sneak through on the inside of Tony Wells. So Wells immediately looking to fight back on the inside of Richard Carver. He challenges in Surtees as Mark Smithson looking around the outside. They accelerate through Surtees. Back on a little bit lower down the line. That's Bill Henderson and Sean Mellors. And it's Sean Mellors looking to the inside and going through on Bill. Is he? Yes, he does. Sean Mellors, you can see him looking to the right of the cockpit just to make sure he doesn't make contact with Bill Henderson as he gains the place. Well, coming through to complete the lap. And Richard Carver stretching his legs over Tony Wells. Mark Smithson in third, but goes off again. Smithson back through the travel trap. Second time in one lap as he kicks up the plume of dust. And I just wonder 
if he got some uh, dirt on those tyres when he went off at Paddock Hill Bend because Fearways is a heavy braking point as we look at the battle up towards the front of the Pro Sport class as Mark Boot leading the way from Mark Abbott. So the pair of them having a nice little tussle and it is just at the moment Boot with the advantage over Mark Abbott. Plenty of scraps going on throughout the field as they race through Druids and then plunge back down the hill. Although only quite close enough just this time around to make the move is Darcy Smith in the black car who we are following in pursuit of several of the cars in front as they arrive into Surtees taking a slightly tight line before launching out on the Grand Prix loop. Leading the Pro Sport class is Matthias Moberg, one of the Swedish drivers. And Moberg is in fact already into fourth place in the race overall, having demoted Darren Anley. So it's Anley there following him through. So Matthias Moberg putting a great performance, well up the order and punching rather rubber's weight in amongst the Super Sport class as through the trees and into Druids. And it's through these slow corners where Moberg really gained the benefit using the power to weight ratio to full advantage down the hill then through Graham Hill Bend, although Darren Anley looking to fight back as much as he can. Well, the crew on the pit will certainly enjoy the action, as indeed we are in the contra box leading the club sport class. We've got John Morris, so John Morris having a great start to his 2011 campaign in the club sport class. He had a double win at Alton Park, and he looks set to claim another victory at Brands Hatch Day. Back to the battle at the front of the field, and Tony Wells is still in very hot pursuit of Richard Carver. So Carver, having snatched the lead, is unable to drive away from Tony Wells. And Wells, hoping on his tail, keeping him nice and honest. They're steering well clear. You can see that line of fluid through Paddock Hill Bend. They're steering clear of that. They don't want to repeat the misfortune that rather beheld, befell Mark Smithson. So through Druids they come, and Richard Carver constantly taking a wide line through Druids. And he really uses that to very good effect because it gives him a, just a bit more top speed on the run down towards Graham Hill Bend as we've got Darcy Smith and Richard Stables having a good tussle. It's Smith just heading up Richard Stables at the moment. They are both chasing down Steve Burgess in the blue number two machine through Paddock Hill Bend. They both go. Richard Stables, again, one of the most exciting drivers to watch in the series, uh, particularly in Danford Alton Park. He was absolutely electrifying. And once more again today, he is well up in the mix there, fighting for 14 and 50. Battles going on throughout the field. This is a gaggle that's being hit up by Sean Mellors. We've got Gary Baxter in the mix there and various others. John Morris also fighting well above his weight as David Franklin piles the pressure onto Sean Mellors. It's Mellors in the yellow car, Franklin in the white machine, then Gary Baxter in the sky blue and orange car following in behind him. So the three of them having a thoroughly enjoyable race. As into some of the slow runners comes Richard Carver. He's got Tony Wells on his tail. The first man they go past is John Watson and John just holding to his line, and so Tony Wells unable to really take advantage of that, he's got an option, but to follow Richard Carver through Paddock Hill Bend. As they climb the hill towards Druids, and at the moment Tony, he's just a couple of car lengths really too far back, although he closes a car length down on Richard, underbreaking Druids, and Richard Carver easily ekes out that advantage. Once more towards Graham Hill Bend, and Tony Wells really needs to get probably a car length or two closer, as they run into Surtees. Well, this is Graham Ridgeway, and Graham, as he accelerates towards Druids, seems to be slowing. That's uh, somewhere off the pace for Graham Ridgeway. I wonder if he's got a problem. In fact, no, that's the problem. The red flag's out. The race is being stopped. Well, what an incredibly eventful race that was. We saw spin-offs. Uh, we've seen loads of people overtaking from way back down into the grid and lots of action out on the track. So we've seen the safety car out as well. The winner for today is um, D Richard Carver and he is in car number 15. So we'll be chatting to him in just a few moments. For Richard Carver. Richard, congratulations, class winner there. Uh, you, you were quite far up the front of the grid, but then you had all of that, those uh, smashes in the first place. How did that affect you? Um, I thought it was going to be um, to my detriment, really, but it actually worked out um, advantageously. You know, I was trying to concentrate on keeping a gap between me and James Abbott behind me. He's always intent on coming up the inside on the start. He likes quite good at the start. So um, I did have a little gap on the first couple of bends, and obviously the safety car sign came out. And um, I was a bit um, upset, really, in that way. I thought I might lose my gap, but... Um, 
on the restart, um, obviously everyone knew there was old Dan that we'd seen it, and um, I forgot I don't know who was in front of me. I've forgotten his name at the moment. But he obviously went in a bit too quick. Um, I was a bit more cautious and made the dive up the inside, and luckily it worked out for me. It didn't work out for him. So um, from that point forward, it was trying to pick the best line round that that bend and, and trying to avoid the oil at all costs, really. But um, it was it was interesting, <laughs> definitely interesting with the oil on the track. It was a very fun race. Uh, the start was uh, very chaotic. Uh, just ahead of me. In front of me, uh, David got T-boned, and uh, there was oil spraying on my uh, visor, so my I didn't see very much at the first uh, lap. And uh, on the second lap, I hit just his oil, and I nearly went off the track in the first corner. But uh, otherwise, the, the race was was very great, I think. Wow! So I bet that gets the adrenaline flowing when you hit the oil. Yeah, really. I mean, I, I just turned the wheel and uh, nothing happened. I just went forward. And finally I went off the, the oil and hit uh, the tarmac again that, that, that there was, were some grip and uh, I managed to hold the car on the tarmac. John, we chatted to you just before race one and you were a bit dubious about whether you'd be seen on the podium again, but here we are. Well, I know, but you can't be too cocky, can you? Obviously, <laughs> things are going to go wrong. But yeah, managed to do it all right. Managed to avoid a load of accidents and had a, had a good race with one or two of the faster cars. OK. It's, it's not cocky, it's confidence. Uh, well, I suppose you've got to be a bit confident, yeah, but uh, pride comes before a fall, doesn't it? So you've just got to be a bit careful. True. So, David, that was quite a short race for you. Obviously, didn't work out how you'd have wanted it to. What happened? Uh, what happened was that I made a really good start and uh, I took, I think, three positions immediately. And we can see behind us right now that um, the mechanics are working on the engine, it looks like. Um, is there a chance you'll be able to compete in race two? Uh, we're doing everything we can. Uh, hopefully they can uh, change the engine in time. They are, they are good and we have to change to a new engine, which uh, we got delivered actually for like 12, 12 hours ago. So that's uh, our luck in this day, that we have a spare engine. So I hope they can fix it in time. OK, great, thank you. Darcy, this isn't the first time you've been racing with Radical, but it is actually the first time in your SR3 here. So can you tell us about what you did before and what uh, brought you to getting this car? Yeah, um, we've, uh, we do a bit of racing at different circuits around the country. Uh, this is the uh, first time we've used this car. We only picked it up on Friday from Radical Sports Cars. Uh, we tested a little bit yesterday and uh, we've gone reasonably well today. Um, I think we've come t uh, 12 or 13th, so we're happy with that. Yeah, I saw, I saw your uh, placing, so you're kind of in the middle of the, um, of the class. Yeah, I'm in the middle of the pack at the moment, which is about as good as we could expect. Um, I haven't driven the GP circuit before. Uh, the, the part of the circuit where you go out to the back is very, very uh, new to me. Um, but no, we're getting used to it. We're changing the gearing on the car now. The lads in the background, Thatcher Motorsport, they're changing the gearing uh, to get a better ratio for the circuit. Tim, this is your first race in the SR3. How did you get on today? It's uh, okay-ish, really. Qualifying wasn't too bad. Um, the race was a bit hairy from the start with a bit of action at the front. I managed to keep it on the track, just about and uh, let a lot of people go past while they, uh, while they were slowing down behind the safety car race. It wasn't too bright, but it was OK. It was good fun. And how have you found the GP track? That's brilliant. It's really good, especially out the back. It's fantastic. It's big, big sweeping bends. It's really good fun. Have you raced a Grand Prix track before? Uh, no. No, not too any indie, but uh, yeah, it's brilliant. So we're here in the Brands Hatch Race Control Centre and we're lucky enough to have grabbed David Scott for a couple of moments, who is the MSVR event director. Hello, David. Uh, sorry to uh, keep you from your work, uh, but this is a part of the... Yeah, you do. You have a few people here. But this is a part of um, racing that not a lot of people get to see oh, up right. here in race you're control. Right. Can you tell us what goes on and your part in it as well? Well, we've got a, a busy event, as you know, this weekend, and the team up here will will run the, the circuit activity. I sort of oversee the activity, but I've got a good team in place. Um, the, the managing clerk, in this case Nick behind us, will he's looking after this particular session on circuit and he'll make the calls in terms of whether we need a safety car, whether we need to recover a car, whether we need to stop a session or whatever. Barry does the radio communications to the guys around the circuit and the recovery vehicles, rescue vehicles, doctors and such like. The two ladies on the end there, they look after the telephones and they're on the telephone to um, the, the, the marshals around the circuit. They will call in incidents as they happen um, and we'll take the appropriate action. We can see it on the screens as you've, you've, you've seen the, um, the screens that we've got. We can zoom in and we can zoom out and it is recording so it's, it's a good, um, good aid to, to circuit safety for us. 
but the guys out on the circuit, the marshals, the volunteer marshals, as you know, they're all they're all volunteers, and they do a good job um, to to make sure the whole event works. And it, it is about everybody. It's not just about the people in here. It's about the guys out on the circuit, the rescue vehicles, the recovery vehicles. Everybody acts as one, or it doesn't happen. David Soderlund has managed to make it down in time for the race to the assembly area. You can see his car back there. Uh, they have actually still had to make some last minute checks and adjustments to the engine though. So uh, hopefully it will continue to be uh, good for the race. The Clubman's Cup Radicals are heading out onto the track as I speak. And most of the cars that started for race one have also been able to get out for race two. Well, again, a very full grid of cars for the second race of the day from the Performance Direct Radical Clubman's Cup with on composition once more Tony Wells. Alongside him, David Jacobs. A bit of a full start there from Mark Smithson. The same for James Abbott. Away we go. And Smithson bogs down. James Abbott gets away well. Wait to see whether they possibly run into some problems as it's Tony Wells who is going to lead into Paddock Kill Ben for the first time around with James Abbott challenging David Jacobs for second. And it's Jacobs, I think, who is just going to hold on as the field all cleanly through, kicking up the cement dust as they plunge the bottom and climb up the hill towards Druids. The race leaders all very nicely bunched, although Tony Wells just getting stretched his legs. Mark Smithson recovering and James Abbott squeezed out onto the grass. So James Abbott losing a couple of positions as flying through is Matthias Moberg. So Moberg up into, I think, fourth position already. And David Sutherland, well, he had a race to the grid. He's now got a race in his hands because he's well up in the top ten. He's just challenging Darren Anley into Surtees. Field all streaming through. Plenty of dicing going on throughout the pack. Which everybody looking to make the move on the competitor ahead of them. Through to complete the first lap of the race. And it's Tony Wells who has got the advantage and is beginning to drive away. Just a little bit here from David Jacobs. It's Richard Carver who's come up into third. Matthias over fourth with their Mark Smithson in fifth position as Mark Abbott and Mark Boot are sandwiching Bradley Smith in the number 21 car, the all-white machine. So it's Mark Abbott who's just got the advantage over Smith and then Mark Boot in the black machine, the next man through as the field all blasting into Paddock Hill Bend as it's Timothy Lyons in the British Racing Green car just towards the back end of your shot. Steve Burgess also looking to try and make amends for his disappointing performance in race one. As we've got Mark Boot going a little bit slowly there, so Mark Boot possibly in some trouble. Battle going on towards the back of the pack. That's Ian Charles and John Watson having a nice little fight. As James Abbott looks to recover from the moment to put him on the grass earlier on. It's David Sordland who he's challenging. So Sordland not only does that new engine work, it obviously works very well. We've got somebody who's kicked up the gravel on the exit of Paddock. I think it could be Mark Smithson once more. But Mark, yeah, he's got a little bit of bodywork trim hanging off there. So Mark Smithson just running fractionally wide. And hopefully he's not done any damage there. A little bit lower down the pack. We've got a great fight here with Bill Henderson, Brian Murphy and Darcy Smith. So it's Henson and Murphy in the two pro sport cars ahead of the super sport car of Darcy Smith. And just moving up again, the place is Bill Henderson to the inside. So Bill Henderson gaining the place in Truist and Darcy Smith following him through. So unfortunately for Brian Murphy, he loses two places in one bite as Gary Ramsdale and Jennifer Ridgway continue their fight. This is for 25th position. And Jennifer trying to chase down Gary through Paddock. Still leading the club sport class. It's John Morris looking well set for another victory in what is proving to be a very successful season thus far for John. So in to second place still is Richard Carver. He's in amongst some of the slower traffic as he attempts to chase down the race leader Tony Wells. It's James Abbott who is recovering up through the order. And Moe is right on the tail of David Jacobs. But James Abbott has been given a 10-second penalty for the jump start. So although he's fighting David Jacobs for track position, in fact, David, in reality, is 10 seconds up the road in terms of the final results. So what that means for James Abbott is he really needs to get past David Jacobs. So you can see that James is very anxious to get through and then try and build out the advantage as streaky on the start finish line goes Bill Henderson. So Bill Henderson, having cleared Brian Murphy, is driving away from Darcy Smith. As still we've got this fantastic fight Matthias Moberg and Darren Anley. It's Anley who's just slipped back ahead of Moberg, and they've got David Sutherland who's come to join them 
for the party as well. So the two Swedish drivers making their trip over well worthwhile, having a great tussle. In fact, Zerdland looking to the outside of Matthias Moberg and a pair of them both keeping Darren Anley very honest. Now we're going to see a move through. Yes, we are. So David Zerdland moving momentarily ahead of Matthias Moberg. I think Moberg is going to look to fight back into Surtees. Indeed he does. As this Ford's Direct Radical Clubman's Cup such a popular series and very competitive as well as Tony Wells looking on course and claiming his second victory of the 2011 season. He edges out Richard Carver by just over two seconds so Tony Wells has been a fairly emphatic likes to fly victory for him. He will be overjoyed with that. It's another club sport class victory for John Morris and the pro sports were won by Matthias Moberg who did find his way past Darren Anley online and look at that Tony Wells shaking the bubbly as the corks are popped and the champagne is sprayed. So Tony, very exciting, congratulations on your win here. You were second in race one. Uh, you managed to make up that bit of extra time here. How did you do it? Yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't fluff the, the start. The, the start in race one was, uh, I used too many revs, so, uh, so I got mugged off the line. And then when the oil was down on the restart, it was, uh, I was too cautious. But this time I got the start right and uh, held the lead into the first corner. And then uh, it was just, uh, you know, just go flat out for a while and build a lead. Matthias, that's your second class win for today, so congratulations. And you had uh, quite a struggle with your teammate there, with David. Yes, we had a bit of a fight, but uh, <laughs> we, it was clean, uh, as it, used, it usually is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was fun. And he overtook you a couple of times? Yeah, uh, but I don't know if he had uh, some kind of problems, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> I finished first. <laughs> Well, congratulations to you, and uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you at another race this year. Yeah, we're coming to Snetterton, but um, unfortunately, me is not driving, but I will be driving at uh, Sandford in Holland. Well, that's it for the Performance Direct Radical Clubman's Cup here today at Brands Hatch. We've seen loads of action on the track, really exciting racing, and we hope that you've enjoyed it as much as we have. We'll hopefully see you next time at Snetterton. See you then.